Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to make this effect that I've used in my game, and you can apply it to many other things. The effect, quickly, is part of the spell where I have in, my, in the game that I'm making, I have a spell called Rock Hurl, where you click on the ground somewhere, and it makes a rock go up into the air, it's up here now, and then it fi finds the closest enemy, and it homes in on them, and then the rock flies towards them, and as soon as it hits them, it smashes into pieces, like that. And quite a few people asked how to have this like rock shattering effect that I have. Um, and obviously this is what the videos are going to be showing you, like how to make this happen. Uh, obviously, like, I just love how this looks. Um, it's hard to get the exact frame. I don't know if I can, can you go frame by frame in media player or whatever this is, this video thing. Um, obviously in, in, in real time that looks really good. And I'm going to be showing you how to do it for any object you have as a model in, well, Blender. I'm going to be showing it in Blender. This will be possible in other softwares, but I know Blender only really. So. All you need for this uh, tutorial is a model to shatter, so I have this this uh, nice rock here, and Blender specifically. Well, uh, not specifically, but preferably. Be a lot better if you have Blender. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it. I'm not going to create the whole ability, but I can make a cube and use this as a like floor. And we'll just do the usual like spreading it out like this. And because it's very bright, we'll give it a uh, material. So, um, let's just do this. And then we will uh, go to the camera, uh, make it solid color, and we'll also move the camera up. Okay, so now first thing we'll do is we'll just have the rock falling so here's our rock uh, that I've made in blender or whatever just have, have your model ready uh, we want to we don't want to import animation or anything the materials don't matter for me um, and then now once we've done that we're gonna put it in the scene now let's just drag it up so preferably if I put this at like zero 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 um, what we'll do is we'll put it a bit closer and up and we'll move this in that direction so now if I push this up a bit more what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the animator we don't want that uh, we'll leave the renderer stuff on we're just gonna simply add a uh, mesh collider so that's for the rock and then we'll put uh, we won't put trigger on we want convex and then we'll add a rigid body now we don't really care about the actual physics as long as it obeys gravity I mean unless it falls too slowly I won't bother tweaking the mass so let's just press play so this is what would happen normally. The rock falls and it hits and it just sort of rolls over or whatever. Now, in my opinion for a rock, that, that mass is very low. It just kind of slowly falls down. So we'll plunk. Um, how about we actually just go to the physics settings and just like increase it by a double. There we go, that's kind of more realistic. So we've got a rock falling. Now since the ground's grey, you know, we might actually, might as well give the, um... Well no, we'll just change the ground colour so that we can leave the rock as its default. Sorry, my cupboard is being annoying. Uh, not much I can do about it, it's a bit windy. Um, I could shut my windows, if you don't mind, one second. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we want to make a... We want something to happen when it collides, so we're going to go onto our rock in the scene. We might as well make it a prefab so that we have... Because this isn't the prefab of the rock, this is the actual uh, Blender file. So we'll just call it um, rock uh, full, call it whatever you want. And then we'll have rock shatter as well. Um, now, let's just call this as well, like uh, rock full. And we'll add some code to this. So we're going to add a script called like, uh, you know, rock shatter. Um, there we go. We get our script on the rock. And obviously when this is compiled, then we can open it up in Visual Studio. And all we want is when it collides with whatever, we want it to shatter into oblivion. We want to shatter it, shatter it into pieces. So we'll say uh, void. Well, actually what we're going to do is we're going to make it a uh, trigger collider. And the reason is because we want to know when it... Um, well, we could do on collider, uh, enter. We'll do trigger, because um, I feel like 
we want um, as soon as it hits, as soon as the rock triggers with any object, we want it to then split into pieces, which will then have um, not trigger. They'll be they'll be actual colliders. So if we say void on trigger enter, and we pass in um, a collider called other, which is the way they normally do it. Now this is what's going to get ran when the rock, you know goes into something so we want to um this is why we want to do the whole like you know rock shattering thing um we're not actually going to shatter a rock we're just going to swap out the model with another rock so we need to take in um a uh, public game object uh rock sh uh, shattered um and then when we um when it collides with something we want to uh instantiate rock whoops sorry, instantiate rock shattered and we want to do it at uh, this um, position so where we are right now and we want to do it with the same rotation so if you've paused it frame by frame and you went to the next frame you wouldn't notice any difference it's just switching out the rock with an identical copy of itself but the only difference about the other one is that it's split up into pieces the reasons why you, the reason why you don't start off with a thing that's split into pieces is because it would just you know fall to pieces quite instantly. So this is going to just basically make the shattered rock at our location. But after we've made that rock at our location, we actually want to destroy this object. So we get rid of this um, game object. Now this is very this isn't the code I have in my thing. In mine, I have it so that after it makes the other rock, or even before this, it deals all the damage and adds force, adds knockback then it does this you don't want to like destroy the object then put any code after this because it'll be destroyed um so what we want to do now is we want to have our actual shattered rock to instantiate and then you know get rid of the other one so what we're going to do is we are going to go back here and you'll see that now on the script it will want to take in a game object um which will be the shattered rock so let's let's go into blender with our uh rock 01 i've already got blender open but uh yeah we want to open the rock so as you see here, uh, let me just close this. We now have our rock and we want to split this mesh up. Assuming you've used Blender before, hopefully we want, this is a, you know, if we move this edge, it's actually like all connected, you know, all of these, um, that's a versity, sorry, not an edge. Um, all of these parts are still connected. You can't just like go inside of it and you know, they're all connected. We want to have multiple different meshes as different fragments of the rock. Now, you probably could do this by hand, but it would take years. So luckily, Blender includes an add-on, which you just have to enable. You don't have to download anything, uh, which allows you to do it. So we'll show you. First of all, you want to be in object mode. This is edit mode, where you can see all the vertices and edges and faces. You want to press tab, and it takes you back to object mode, and you can see it down here. You're in object mode. Now we're going to go to file, user preferences, add-ons, and we will get a list of all the add-ons that are already with Blender that you haven't got enabled. We want to search for cell. And you'll see we have one called object cell fracture. So if you tick the box and close it, make sure you're in object mode, the one where you got an orange outline and not this, you're in object mode. You want to then um, press spacebar when you've got it selected. So not uh, there's only one object, so it is selected like this. Press spacebar for the search and you can search cell fracture. There we go, object cell fracture, press enter and you get this window. Now. I've never, whenever I've done this before, I've never changed any of these settings. I don't need to. You can obviously tweak stuff if you want to for what you want. I'm just going to recommend, you know, pressing OK. And what it's going to do is it builds, as you see there, randomly fractured pieces of, um, it basically builds a box around your thing. Then it uses the Boolean tool. Now, if you don't know what the Boolean tool is, it's a modifier and it literally, um, so if you look now, well, sorry, this is the decimator that I already had on it. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. That was just for making the object uh, look low poly. Um, the Boolean tool basically makes it so that you can cut out parts of an object where other objects overlap it. So if you put a modifier, a Boolean, onto a like cylinder and you shoved a cylinder inside, you pressed apply and you removed it, there'll be a giant cylinder hole through it. So that's what you can do for modeling that kind of thing. Now, you might think our object's normal, but if you look down here... Oh, did it not actually do it? Uh... Oh, I think I undid. Sorry, I'll just do it again. I pressed undo. So there we go. Now, if you see down here, we have two layers. We have our layer here. Everything's fine. And we have a second layer where everything its the same model, but it's got lines through it. And it's all fractured up, all little bits of it, you know? So we can pick apart and take it out. 
and there's no missing faces, it's all connected properly. So this object is now just you know fractured up randomly, which is more realistic. Now, all you have to do really is you just want to take your new project thing, you want to you know save it as uh, what am I calling this one? I call it Rock Shatter, yeah, Rock Shatter Assets. What to call it? Rock01 um, Shattered.blend. And now you can close it. And what we're actually going to do is the rock that we had earlier. Um, just, just give me a second. It's going to go into port. We're going to actually get rid of that one because we, we don't even need that now. We've just got our new shattered one. And the reason why we only need this is if we get rid of animation and we wait and we put it in the scene you'll see that inside of it we have icosphere then all of these cell parts of it so it's split up into like 41 parts so the first icosphere is just our rock and then all of ones are fragments of a rock of the rock so if you look here we will take our thing to the side um oh wait why is this uh not with everything else Doo -doo -doo. So if we move everything up, this is everything. This first one is actually just the exact same identical thing of it, just without the fragments. Um, and then this is obviously all the fragments. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back to zero. We're going to take it outside to ruin the prefab, supposedly. Yeah. Uh, we'll call this, you know, rock full like we had originally. And then this whole thing here with all of the cells can be called um, rock shattered. So you'll have, you know, your original thing all together and you'll have a shattered version. And all you need to do is you need to um, make them both prefab. So I'll replace the old one and I'll put rock shattered as a separate one. On rock shattered, you want to go to all of the cells, not, not the uh, parent object. You want all the separate cells, select them all. You want to add mesh collider uh, convex and you want to add rigid body with a very low mass probably for this because it's just that each this is the mass that each little bit's going to have so I'll put point 0.3 um, and I'm not going to do the maths to work out you know the ma the actual total weight so I'm just going to put this back to what it was so we had a uh, mesh collider which was a trigger remember the other ones weren't triggers the sh these rock fragments they're not triggers because they uh, they want to collide with things properly um, then we had a rigid body with a mass of 5 and we had the code called rock shatter now this um, game object, the rock shattered, the thing we're instantiating, is going to be this. So we're going to drag it in. It's a prefab. We can now delete it from the scene, and you know just apply prefab. Now if we move this up, this is the time we've been waiting for. We'll go see if it works. And there we go. We got a problem. Okay, so the variable rock shattered has not been assigned. Okay. So it's saying basically, yeah, I can't instantiate this. Did I, I did I not put it into the thing? Well, I swear I did. Hmm, that's odd. I swear I did it. <laughs> Go back and watch to make sure I did it. But anyway, let's try now. Okay, that worked. Uh, the only problem is they kind of all stayed together. They could have fallen apart, but there was no real like reason for them to because they kind of nicely just fell to the ground. So. One thing you can do actually, once you instantiate it before you destroy, we can do we can basically add an explosive force. So we can say um, how we're going to do this force because um, normally you want to apply the force to an object. So we could just say um, get component uh, rigid body dot. Uh, explosive, yeah, add explosion force, and we want an amount of force, so I don't know, 200 uh, vector free. So the position is going to be our trans oh, sorry, the current position, so the center of the rock, transform not position, and then the radius will just put five because this is the only object in the scene, doesn't matter, you might want to tweak that value. Um, that should work because what it's going to do is when it's instantiated all the new ones, it's going to add an explosion force around it before. Hmm. Was that just not enough uh, force? Because in mine, I'm pretty sure I did 500 to make it seem good. Why are they not? Oh, the what? These things don't actually have rigid bodies on them. 
That's quite odd. Um, it, was, it probably have worked right away then. That's quite weird, to be honest. Um, mesh collider. I, m I must not have saved the prefab, sorry. Um, ridge body. Uh, point three or something. I feel like they're going to go absolutely flying now because I've added a really large force to things that way that much. But There you go. There you go. That looked much better now. So, if you didn't get what happened there, we the rock falls, and as soon as it touches something, the big rock, it's then going to create all the shattered pieces of itself in the same place. Add an explosion force, which just means, you know, a force in that point in the world, and it, it like, explodes outwards, so all the rocks will go away. And then we, you know, destroy the original rock. So we're left. It just looks like our rock is shattering when it hits something. And you can do this, if anything. Um, if you want it, obviously, not to have an explosion force, you might want it to just, like, hit the ground and crumble, then you would just take out... Uh, this line here. Oops. So obviously you can tweak this to how you want, but I just thought it's a really cool thing to do. In the, I, I really like how it makes the spell feel in the game. So obviously, oh, did that? Not, not that still just is what happens when they fall, like without an explosion force, supposedly. Yeah. Well, anyway. So there you go. We've got all these shattered pieces. They've all got their own rigid body and mesh collider. Now this, if you do loads of this, then obviously it'll build up in the scene, like the um. If you have all these objects in the scene, you could get more and more. So what you might want to do is, on these little shards of rock, you might want to have a way of... Um, you might want to have a timeout, a co-routine on the code, on the little shattered pieces, saying, like, you know, after a certain amount of seconds, despawn, or whatever. So, yeah. Um, I think that's it, to be honest. Uh, if there's anything else you want to ask, then, you know, feel free to ask, and I could make a part two if there's anything more you want to, sh uh, want to know. Uh, if you see anything you like in any of my other videos or in anyone else's videos on Unity on the internet, then obviously feel free to ask, and if I can help, I will. Um, I hope you like this video. I think it's a pretty cool one to make. I really like this effect, and, you know, it's pretty simple to do. All you need to know is very simply how to use Blender and, you know, have Unity ready. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't already, obviously like the videos that you want to see more of, so I know. Uh, subscribing would be lovely. Um, check out our Discord channel in the uh, comments to get you know help on anything you need help on also that we have showcase channels to you know show off the work you've been making and just discuss and help each other you know feel free uh, if any of you want to join and actually be quite like an active helper you're not you're not really signing up to anything but uh you can have the special role which is basically for helping people out so they know they can come to you to help um the server's currently got over 100 members now so you know it's starting to grow um but yeah i think i've said everything obviously thanks for watching the video and goodbye